What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. Before we get into the vlog portion of this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about Up Energy and why it is discontinued as a brand. Stick with me here. If you don't want to watch this talk, you can skip to the vlog by skipping to this portion of the video, the time on the screen. I do not consider Up a failure. On launch day, we did $120,000 in sales online only. That's unheard of in the energy drink business. Like that doesn't happen. Within the full year, we did $1.2 million in revenue. Very, very good considering everything that we were sort of going through. By the end of the year, we were in over 1,000 physical stores. And by the end of the year, we had a massive contract negotiated with Vitamin Shop to go into 775 of their stores. But that contract had to be postponed because of things I'm gonna get to in a second. Part two, the lawsuit. Literally on our launch day, we received a cease and desist stating that we had to stop selling our product or else legal action would be taken. Just some back end info, we hired our attorney to do research and when we told her the name up, her response was that it was a double-edged sword, meaning because it's such a common word used in businesses and in marketing material that it's almost very hard to come after someone and to win, but it's also very hard to protect yourself because it's such a commonly used word. With all that said, we filed for our trademark, we waited and we got it approved. And that sort of gave me the confidence, you know what, let's do it. I like the simplicity, it's two letters, catchy, you know, caffeine brings your energy up, let's go for it. When I got the letter, I didn't want to give in on day one. Literally, we launched online, we did $120,000 in sales and we were a strictly online company, like no social media companies ever done that with an energy drink and I was so hyped and like, I was like, no, nah, nah, this is my baby, I'm starting this, let's, let's explore it, I'm not gonna give in right away. Fast forward to December 2017, we switched from a bottle to a can. This honestly had a ton of benefits with distributors, the bottle was too expensive, so we were able to get our cost down, we were able to get the cost down to you guys. It was just a move that made sense with distribution, retailers, and with online customers. And we really hoped that this bottle to can switch would help alleviate a lot of the stress with the lawsuit. Keep in mind guys throughout this whole time, a lot, a lot of cost is adding up, just sort of continuing and dragging this on and not wanting to give up, right? You're being a little bit stubborn, very stubborn. And fast forward to March, we go to mediation. Essentially our company and the other company meet with the mediator. What can we do to make both parties happy so we can just stop paying all this money, we can just end it here and move on, right? We couldn't come to an agreement. At this point, we were at over $250,000 spent on pre-trial fees. Our attorney let us know that in order to continue to full trial, we should be prepared to spend seven figures. So at this point, we had a big choice to make. I truly believe that we had a solid case and that's why I fought for everything for so long and spent so much money. But the big question we had to ask ourselves was, is this worth seven figures? And is it worth seven figures with the chance of losing. Throughout the entire duration of the company, we've had our foot on the brake the entire time. When you go to retailers and distributors and vitamin shops, 7-Eleven, these people are super interested because they've never seen a social media company like this before. It's, it's smashing, we're, we're killing it, but it, they know that we're in a lawsuit. You can't hide that. If you Google up energy, the first thing that comes up is a ton of, it's, it's lawsuit videos, right? And it's not a good look, it's not good for business, and so therefore, we kind of had to settle this before being able to push forward. And so, looking back, it's just so stupid because we wouldn't have to have, all we had to do was change our name and be done, and then we can move on. So we've changed our name to 3D Energy. Literally, guys, this name change has opened up so many doors already, and I'm so excited. I feel like 3D kind of, it reminds me of coming to life and like real experience and just, an energy drink, and it's very simple, it's very catchy, I think it looks super clean. A simple name change has opened up so, so many opportunities, and that leads me to now what? 7-Eleven is the biggest convenience store chain in the entire world. They have over 64,000 stores worldwide, and they took a really big chance with us. I feel like they're the first to sort of be open to the idea that uh, it's not traditional, it's not traditional marketing. We've never done any traditional marketing, we're all social media based, and they're really interested in that, and they're, they're giving us a chance, not only giving us a chance, if we have our own 7-Eleven fl flavor, this is the same green Pantone as a 7-Eleven, and this is an exclusive flavor they're gonna have for 90 days, and then this is gonna go online, but this is honestly my favorite one, over the blue, and it's like this one, and then the blue, and the white, and the red too. But anyway, they gave us our own flavor, and they're giving us 350 stores in Denver that we're already in, so if you had any 7-Eleven in Denver, you will see 3D there. And by August 20th, we're gonna be in 350 7-Elevens in Chicago. There's so much opportunity with 7-Eleven and um, the goal is to have it on every single corner in the uh, oh, oh. <laughs> They took this deal on knowing about the name change and they thought we would have no issues. They believed in us and um, I'm just really excited. We plan on keeping the original 1,000 retailers 
uh, plus that we brought on initially and they know about the name change as well. There's, yeah, every, everyone knows and now it's just like finally happening and now you guys are finding out but we had to like let everyone know kind of like subtly over the last few months that it was coming and yeah, I'm just, I feel like a big weight's kind of off the shoulders. We are currently talking with Circle K, HEB, Speedway, Kroger, Murphy USA, Mapco. Our goal by the end of the year is to be in 5,000 retail stores, which I think is very doable. So it's time to put a foot on the gas and get going. But guys, with all this said, like this is all great and exciting and we've been killing it on the back end, even though like the circumstances, but I think the biggest lesson here, and I, I feel like I need to admit is just my mistake, honestly. I'm a very big picture person and I feel like I'm really good at ideas and coming up with, with, with like sort of themes and brands and flavors and like I want to get this in everyone's hands, how can I do this? I'm not good at back end things. I'm not good at, at the tra trademarks and law and I'm not good at like the papers and just like that stuff. And what I did in this whole Up Energy 3D thing is I let, I put the trust in other people and not that that's a bad thing, it's just I should have done more research. I should have looked further into it and not just trusted like, oh, God, I, should, I should have looked harder and I didn't. And for me, I, I know that's my weak point. I'm not a patient person. I just wanted to create a badass product, low calorie, 200 milligrams of caffeine, make it taste great and get it to you guys. And like, I should have taken more time to look in the market, see what was there and just be sure that we were going to be okay before making such a big jump. And at the end of the day, I proved you know, moving forward, I completely take the blame. I took an L, I messed up. And with that, my stubbornness and hardheadedness led, I could have ended that, we could have made that name change so much, so long ago, and like, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal, but I spent like, over a quarter million dollars trying to prove a point. At the end of the day, I'm very, very happy with this name. I think it's gonna, I want it to be the third best selling energy drink in the world. I want to be right under Monster Red Bull, and I truly believe it can. And, uh, yeah, just that's gonna. I know this is supposed to be like a short talk and now it's long, but I admit to my mistakes. I was wrong. Take your time, guys. Be patient and be sure you really evaluate every possible scenario before you make a big jump. That's my weakness, and I'm working on that. And uh, with that said, it's time to move forward. I'm super excited. Oh, yeah, look at these. Yeah. These are all available, except for the green one. It will be available in October, but for oh, free shipping on mine, I think it comes out if you order two or more cases. like. Two dollars a can, two dollars and four cents a can. So with that, so go check it out. Okay, right, now go enjoy the vlog. We've been here for nine days now, and this vacation has been absolutely amazing. If anything, I feel so much more excited and ready to get back to work, get back home. What? I think it's time we leave. Just wrapped up a pretty good workout. Now, I have to go and get my hair cut. I've got some things I need to look good for this weekend and I haven't shaved my face. I just feel disgusting after being gone for like nine days. Really quick post-workout, making a shake with two scoops of protein. Every time I leave town for a bit and come back to the gym, though I love the gym so much, I almost feel like all I can pay attention to is things that, that start going wrong. Things, machines that are losing pieces, clips that are you know being stolen and going missing. And but I just feel like, for me, I'm always nitpicking it so much. And so when I, like my first workout back from being out of town, I feel like I'm more focused on paying attention to things that need to get fixed and things that need to be improved. And it's a, not that it's like demotivating or negative, it's just like, 
that's when I focus and I come back and it, it, it kind of shifts away from my workout and I start focusing on that and I get kind of consumed with it. But nonetheless, had a pretty good workout. By the way, if you guys use Siguzman, the discount code, you'll get 20% off anything from Ghost. They just launched their Sour Apple Warheads flavor pre-workout, which is super good. So I think it's in stock right now if you want to go check it out. Let's go. When it comes to taking care of yourself, you know, keeping your skin clear, getting a haircut every week to two weeks, trimming your beard, it's a pain in the ass sometimes. And girls, if you're watching this, I salute you because for me, it takes about an hour every time I get a haircut. And I know a lot of women spend like four, five, six hours getting stuff done. And like, that's crazy. But if you do take care of yourself, I promise it just like brings your energy up. It brings your vibe up. It brings, it's all momentum, right? That's what we create with feeling good, looking good, working out in the gym, taking care of ourselves. So right now I haven't trimmed my beard in about nine days. So let's clean this up. Oh, much better. I bought them without knowing where I was going to put them, so I'm kind of figuring that out as I go. Woo! Oh yeah! Yup, 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 yup. These are gorgeous! Hell yeah! We got the easy bars, we got the straight bars. We have all the even numbers on the right hand side, all the odd numbers on the left, all the way down to 110 pounds. I wanna get these little stickers, we have them on the dumbbells right now, but kinda of put like 20, 40, 60, just when people are racking them, they know where to rack them to keep them more organized. Also did some rearranging, uh, pretty much pulled the bicep machine back. I kinda of moved these four around to let them breathe a little bit. Pulled the jammer back. This is like the, probably the least used piece in the gym, but our trainers do use them from time to time, so we didn't want to get rid of it. We could sell for 200 bucks probably, but I figure I might as well keep it if we have room for it right now. And when we get new equipment later on, there's big shit that's coming in a few weeks. Kind of decide if we may, that, that would be the one to go if we have to pick something to go. Hello. <laughs> Look at the progress of this building. They put up essentially all of the brick, so that little pot piece, wow. Today I rented out this studio, so if you actually come through this door, you can check it out real quick. There's like different rooms in here, so we have this massive white uh, room in here. It's got these really cool windows and texture. You guys never met David, but he is visiting from Austin. Do you have a David or, or have a beast? I guess, there's a I, guess, I guess both. There's a question, there's a question. On a personal level, David, but I'm used to people being like, oh, this had a beast, so yeah, I guess yeah. a little bit of both. To work with Apple for a few months now, he's smashing it, so we decided to invite him over, get some high quality content photos, and uh, just sort of hang out. We're gonna go get some dinner, work out tomorrow, and sort of spend some time with him, yeah? Yo, I'm so excited. You know, uh, one of the big things I'm trying to do now is just sort of take a little bit off of my shoulders, like stress-wise, just because every time we have a launch, really like 10 to 14 days leading into a launch. Like my workflow is really, really heavy. And that just made me think of a, a heavy, heavy flow. Got it. Anyway, the 10 to 14 days leading into any launch can be really stressful. Uh, there's a lot of work and I like to sort of have my hands in everything. And I like to shoot the photos. I want to edit the photos. I want to do the, the sizing video, the website. I want to do everything, right? Because I'm very kind of a control freak, but I'm learning to slowly let go of the reins a little bit. So we hired Anderson today. He's really, really good, really talented to shoot, to edit some photos. I got Nabil out in Ireland right now shooting some of our athletes. I'm trying to get all that marketing content handled, handled early so I don't have to do it so I can focus on other things, other aspects of the launch. 
and yeah. Bro, let, let's see Russ with no pun. Yeah, no, right, no, no, no. We gotta be relatable over here, man, right? Let's, let's see some relatability, all right? Bro, I'm not taking it. I'm not let's taking it. Let me just see my ball. Let me see, bro. Let's, Why are you trying to set me up? People need to know you're not superhuman. <laughs> <laughs> let's, see, let's, let's see, let's see, let's see. Bro, where's, where'd Russ go? There it is, right here, yeah. This, and the Jimmy looks way different. Yeah. <laughs> so we're doing a sick Nike like for him. We have moved from this room to this room, which is also super cool. But guys, like I am not kidding. I don't ever get headaches, ever. And right now, like, like, so, like sometimes I have to stop talking and just like lean over here because this is throbbing like, my back of my Bro, neck. Your is right like, side of your head? Yeah, yeah. Right, right yeah? My right eye and everything. Else. Heidi too, and Heidi never complains. I really think, I mean, I didn't. I, I don't drink heavily. I, in the Caymans, I didn't drink heavily at night, but I drink during the day heavily. I had alcohol for like nine days in a row. What? That might be worse because then you're like recovered for the next day. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, I had I had no hangover any day in the Caymans at all. But right now, like, I didn't drink yesterday, but, and but I just feel like dead. Like I withdrawals. These are withdrawals. Yeah. I think I was an alcoholic for nine days, and now I'm having withdrawal. Alcoholic depression. No, it is, bro. Like. It's funny because I drank, oh. I drank beer last night and I felt amazing. It sounds really bad. I felt like myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to stop. I need to stop relying on it. Honestly. How you feeling, honestly, right now? On a scale of one to ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there negative numbers? It's My head hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel nauseous. But we didn't drink anything yesterday. I, it just kicked in today that we haven't. Yeah. Like I thought I was gonna throw up on the way here. I was like, am I getting motion sickness in the car? What is this? We can fight through it. We're, we're fitness <laughs> professionals. What's up, Sky? Hi. I'm talking about our alcohol. Like we're having alcoholic withdrawals right now. We're having the symptoms. Boxing. <laughs> she, she didn't even go to the Caymans. <laughs> if there's one way to cure this uh, problem that we're both having, it's a big bowl of poke. Dave's never been here before, and this is by far my favorite poke I've ever had in my entire life. I stand behind it. Uh, I, this is like a normal size bowl. Okay, that's like the normal, and then I get the large. So that's the large. But I get double rice, double protein, so this is 10 scoops of tuna. This is like a lot of food. I don't know if I can handle that. Yeah, they convinced me to do the same You got the same, it's, it's a lot of food. I'm pretty hungry. So. And I'm hoping this will uh, this will cure me. Dave's gonna have to forgive me because when guests come in town, I normally take him out Saturday night on the t and just have, you know, and, sorry bro, <laughs> can't do it tonight. You can't even talk, <laughs> but bro. I can't, but tomorrow we're gonna get a sick workout and uh, kind of hang out record the day and have a good one so go subscribe go check don't go subscribe go check out the channel and if you like what you see then you can subscribe i appreciate that yeah hey, you're very welcome and i'm gonna go and end the vlog right now thank you so much for watching and for your support see you in the next one